Joining me now in Studio A, as I mentioned, to talk about economic development efforts and certain things that have been going on in the community in the last few weeks. Tim Gibbs is back with me from Four Corners Economic Development, the new executive director of that ex- organization. I keep saying new, but you're not really new anymore, yeah, are you? Yeah, I've ditched that title. Yeah, I should probably ditch it too then, shouldn't yeah. I? So you are the executive director of Foresaid, and I'm glad that you're here. So thanks for coming in. Happy to be here. Appreciate it's, that. It's always a good conversation, and it's it's nice to be able to share well, what's going on in the activity uh, in the community. I enjoy the chance to pick your brain a little bit about mm-hmm. economic development and talk about some of these things. I guess the biggest thing that happened recently that I wanted to ask you about is um, the implosion of the stacks at uh, Salmon Generating Station. Of course, mm-hmm. that plant power plant has been closed now for um, a couple of years, I think, right? It's yeah. not has been generating power, and we knew that this was coming, but I think just to see it happen yeah. um, kind of stirs a lot of memories in folks who maybe worked there, had family who worked mm-hmm. there, and I mean, it was a big provider for a number of years to this community of it, energy and jobs. It's a tough gig. It, it truly is. And, yeah. and if you went out there um, and saw the implosion of the stacks, you'd notice there's a lot of folks sitting in their trucks, sitting by themselves, not really gathering into groups, but they wanted to go out and see it themselves. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it may have been a place that they had spent their career working in. It may have been a place that their their family had supported their family as well. And and those jobs too. You know, Mark Twain always has a saying, there's facts, lies, and statistics. Right. And and statistics are like that. At its peak, there was 1,500 direct jobs out there. Yeah. That was probably close to $100,000 a year. Those salaries, high paying jobs. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's $117 million a year in um, employee uh, salaries that's, right. that's gone. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's about $21 million a year for the state. It was about $4 million, a little under $4 million a year for the county. And this institution where we're sitting right now. Salem though, College. Yeah, it was a couple million dollars a year. Right. So the school district there, again. Huge, huge impacts. Um, and some of that's getting replaced, to be clear, right? Some of the property tax with some of the other things, right? A little bit, as I recall from those conversations. Isn't that part of the plan? Well, I mean, yes. There's some solar going I, and, out, I'm, out and, there. And, by the way, I, I'm not playing politics. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just talking about sure. the, we, we talked about the stacks coming down yes. and what they symbolized. Mm-hmm. Um, and they symbolize a lot of things. I okay. mean, uh, certainly there was a reason why, um, um, you know, the, these things happen, but the impacts are really, really tough. And for the That's people true. that are living through those, those families that are living through uh, sure. living through that as well, and transitioning, that's a hard game. Well, and yeah, you're right. And again, uh, I was reading a lot of the comments uh, on, on Facebook and mm-hmm. social media uh, during that time. A lot of folks were talking about how, you know, that their um, father, grandfather, mother, yeah. grandmother, aunt, uncle, whomever worked at the plant and, and you know, it supported yeah. their family and sent kids to college and things like that. And so a lot of, uh, a lot of memories associated with that facility. It is. And, and, and so I, uh, um, I, I don't, I'm not trying to be depressing when I, when I talk about this thing, we're in transition mm-hmm. and we're doing a lot of things trying to, to uh, assist with that and try to build a bigger piece of pie for everyone to take advantage of. But that was a, that was a big blow. Yeah, true. And I know a lot of folks are looking across the highway at the other coal-fired power plant owned by Arizona Public Service, and, and what's the future of that plant? They have said maybe, what, 2032, 2031? 2031 is the date. It actually has uh, five owners. Uh, an APS, the majority is APS, right? Yeah. APS, um, and we know that major- the majority of the owners are exiting. Now, Intech, Navajo Transitional Energy Company, right. is looking to acquire a larger stake in that, and it, if not a minority, at least the largest minority stake in that as well. Mm-hmm. And they're doing some very, very interesting things out there as well. They're doing a, carpet, a project called Carbon Safe, where they're working with New Mexico Tech about uh, doing a, a, a demonstration a carbon sequestration project, okay. where they're using Class Six wells to to uh, put carbon dioxide in the ground and 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 study the application of that and what that would mean towards uh, um, um, a business and industry that emits carbon. Right. Uh, Make it cleaner, well. I guess, yeah, right? And not as up to threatening to the environment. Mm-hmm. 95% reduction in carbon dioxide. Okay. So there, there's a multi-million dollar study going on out there with some of our educational partners right now that could have impacts on that facility. Nice. Um, but 
I don't know if the die's been cast yet. So it's 2031 is the okay. proposed closing date for that facility. Got you. But you're right. There's a lot of conversations going on about the future yeah. of that of that facility. Yeah. That's that's Rightfully for sure. So. And so um, from an economic development standpoint, I guess, let's talk about the future across the street at the, the sound generating station. As I mm-hmm. mentioned, right, there is a big solar there is. installation going. Yeah. It, it, it's I think it's done, right? It's been installed or is almost done being installed in yep. that neighborhood, right? Yep. There is, and, and, and it, there are opportunities there because even with these large power plants, you have large distribution networks. You, you have a grid, a nationwide grid that, that goes west as well. Mm-hmm. So if you put renewables in there, if you're if you're doing uh, you know, solar and those type things, you can connect to the grid, and it's very very difficult and hard to build these grids. That, that and so you've got infrastructure there you can take advantage of. True. So there's the competitive advantages for those type industries to locate here. Then and we have 300 days a year of sun. Right. Um, that, that helps. Uh, that could help as well. Okay. Some natural gas. Yeah, I mean, um, it, facilities too, I think, are part of the plan out it there. It could be. Okay. Once again, the carbon sequestration, even of natural gas facilities, would be core. Mm-hmm. I mean, because even though natural gas is much, much cleaner than coal, there still is some emissions with True. natural gas generation as well. And if you can capture that and sequester that, then it even would lead to even more of an increase for, for natural gas generation. Gotcha. Well, it's a, it is definitely a, a transition time. You're absolutely right yeah. about that mm-hmm. for this community. And, uh, you know, we've been talking about it for, for a number of years, and, and we'll continue to talk about it for yeah. a number of years into the future because we are shifting. And I know a lot of folks are a little uneasy about that, but uh, hopefully some of these newer technologies will come to pass and, and folks will locate here in, in San Juan County because they can see what, a, what the advantages are. And having that infrastructure, I think, is one of those things that certainly puts us on a lot of folks' lists. At least I hope it does. And one of the things that I want to talk to you about today was a, a, a grant that Forsett had received from the Department of Energy, uh, which is forward-looking, mm-hmm. uh, because this grant looks at the attributes of our existing energy econ- uh, economy and says, how can we reuse those assets in different ways? Okay. So right. how can we use CO2? How can we use helium? How can we use hydrogen? How can we use natural gas in ways that would build, be building blocks that would give us competitive advantages in manufacturing. Gotcha. Now, there is a CO2 pipeline that runs from Colorado all the way through the state, goes right through San Juan County. Um, Delta Airlines did an announcement about two weeks ago that they wanted to get to, I think it's 25% of their jet A fuel from renewable sources, and carbon dioxide was uh, the primary source that they, that they mentioned hmm. that the technology is there for. So you can make actually renewable uh, jet fuel right. having carbon dioxide. Interesting. We've got a history of refinery refineries in this community. That's one thing we got competitive advantages. In other words, it costs less to do it here than other places because we already have the raw materials. Not starting from scratch. That's right. Yeah. Helium is an inert gas, but it's it's also used in the production process of building chips, computer chips. Right. Because you have to shield the process, and you have to use inert gases to do that, and helium is one of the gases they can use for that. And you don't find that everywhere. You don't. But and you do find it, it around here. It's naturally occurring. Yeah. So the, once again, a competitive advantage of a product and how we can apply it for a different use. Mm-hmm. Uh, natural gas, you can make transportation um, lubricants. You can make oil. You can make, you can make the best oil in the world out of natural gas. Uh, well, we know we have plenty of that around. Yeah, we do. And, and we know how to get it out of the ground we efficiently. Do. And we have to, and when we sell our natural gas and put it in the pipelines and ship it afar, we pay a, a discount rate to get it out of here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and many, many times, if someone is actually using that here for a manufacturing of a product, they could lock in a cheaper price they could get anywhere else, and they'd have a competitive advantage for manufacturing products here. Once again, how can we take the pieces and the parts that we have, apply them in different ways, and manufacture parts parts and goods here for our people, for, uh, for jobs, and also for tax generation. Right. Exciting. And so this grant would help you identify yeah. some of these things and help you maybe um, market or, or promote this to other folks? Or what does the grant cover, I guess? Well, first and foremost, it helps us identify what these markets are okay. and, it, and the segments of it as well. Mm-hmm. And it also helps us get through all the research that's been done on these type things. The end product is we have a marketing plan that says these are the segments of the economy that we have competitive advantages in. Right. That we, that we, it's cheaper to do it here than other places. Mm-hmm. If we get to the point that we even identifies the companies, either an up and coming company or the existing companies that we should be talking to, that we should be sharing this opportunity, that we should be trying to, in some cases, incentivize to be here, then that's even a bonus. 
But it's just a new way of looking at our assets and applying them in a way that one, fundamentally we have competitive advantages. Where right. it's cheaper to do it here than other places. And two, would uh, give us an opportunity to start building more things here and manufacturing here uh, for the folks that we have that have the skill sets to do that and been displaced from some of the stuff we were talking about earlier. Right, right, very true. And this is a federal grant you mentioned, right? It is, Department of Energy. Okay, the state is also um, communicating, I guess, there's a committee hearing not too long ago, yeah, Economic well, Development and Natural Resources. First thing, we got a, uh, a state grant as well. Mm. It's called the Mexico uh, Department of Commerce Leads Grant. Okay. And uh, we got a grant that's going to help us do the design build of a spec building. And if you're trying to recruit companies, you have to have facilities to do that. And we, we certainly, if you go to our site, to the Four Corners ED site, there's there's a listing of properties and a, a listing of existing buildings that's in right. San Juan County that's open here. But if you type in 50,000 square foot you know, speculation building with high ceilings and, and a few other attributes that's really driving the type of buildings people are looking for, they don't exist. Mm. It, it's just not there. Okay. We, we don't have that. So if we are going to try to attract and to grow and bring things in, we got to have facilities to do it. Now, we're not talking about trying to compete with private sector. We're talking about building a building. One building. One building. Okay. Potentially, and it would be located at the, the, the city of Farmington's, is developing a new 200-acre industrial park. Okay. So it could be the first building on that. If we fill that building, potentially we do another. We fill that building, we potentially do another. But we're not trying to affect the marketplace. We're just trying to have a product. So this building would be unique, and, and it's not all, It's not something that is around it doesn't exist. elsewhere yeah. in the community. And yeah. that's what you're talking about. It, yeah. it is unique. And I guess the yeah. size and just the, the attributes the attributes to it, the high ceilings, as you mentioned, things along that line, to make yeah. it usable for a lot of different uses, I guess, from an industrial for standpoint. For we can compete, yes. Okay. Yeah. And so that would give you the money to build this spec building, I guess? It, it's or not the money to, to build, build it? it, but it's the design. So mm. then we'd know what it would cost, okay. we'd know the attributes of it, and then we could align our efforts towards either doing it you know, privately or publicly to bring to the table to build it. I see. And we can even, along the way, we're even marketing this right now to potential companies that we're talking to. Because it's much, much easier if you got a bird in hand. In other words, a company sure. says, if you do this, we will come. Right, right, right. Then true speculation. I got it. So okay. It helps with that as well. Very good. Kind of sweeten the pot a little bit. Sweeten yeah. the deal. So that would that would be good. Um, this other um, topic of the uh, committee hearing that was here, economic development and uh, natural resources, pardon me. Yeah. Yeah, it was interesting. They were here. We had, and it, this is my first uh, committee hearing that, I, that I've attended. I'm not going to use that N word, uh, but... Uh, it was interesting that they uh, they came to Farmington, and I, and I was really grateful that they did. Mm -hmm. So they brought, uh, it was a joint hearing, so you had both the House and the Senate being involved in that. And we got to have pretty open conversations about about the policies, the direction, and things of the up, that may be coming up for the upcoming session. But more than anything, I just think it gave legislators from other areas of the state a chance to see Farmington, Always see nice. the economy right. of far Farmington, and hear from um, um, uh, local and state officials about where we are and potentially where we're going and the impacts of some of the decisions they would make for this economy in northwest New Mexico. Right. Very good. And that is something that the state uh, legislature, I think, does, right, is these committees to try to travel around the state maybe from time to time and have these hearings and yeah. hear from local folks like yourself. They do, but this is the first time I've heard of it being here for a little while. Yeah. So, yeah. And it gave me the, the opportunity to get in front of the committee, to sure. get an overview of the economy of it. It gave me an opportunity to work with the, the city where they were talking about the rail project as well. Uh, there was conversations about carbon sequestration. There, there was a broad plethora of conversations that were very, very open. Um, and there was certainly a difference of opinion on, on several of them. Um, but I think it was fortuitous to have the conversations around the state where they can hear from all, stu all of, the, uh, of the residents of New Mexico. Sure. I, I agree with you. And again, as we talk about, that seems to be the theme of the show today, that this community is in transition. And to let those folks from other parts of the state that maybe isn't in transition see what effect that's having in Farmington, yeah. whether it's employment or opportunities or things like that. You know, and I think there's always been transition, if you think well, about true. it. Well, true. Throughout I mean, time. There, there just has been. I, I, we will look back you know, in years to come and talk about the impact of broadband. That's another grant that we've got. Uh -huh. Another if uh, of of people working from home, uh, people being uh, uh, breaking down the barriers of, of the miles between us and Albuquerque or, or Santa Fe yeah. or Phoenix or any place else in the world by having access to high speed internet. There, we're so 
we, we are in transition. There's no, there's no doubt about that. But I would think that you would have a hard time picking any period of time in the, since I've been alive or even before that we weren't in transition. It's always about trying to, to look ahead, break down barriers, and find the competitive advantages of our community to share to the state, to the nation, and to the world. Right. I think you're right, and I think you're right. But this is a pretty big transition. I guess. It is. That's the only maybe difference no, that I see, it is. is that yeah. it's pretty big. And I think a lot of the old-timers that are still around, if, if any, you know, when you think about when this area was a farming community and farming area, mm-hmm. and then sh- transition to energy and oil and gas, that was a big change, too, in the 1950s. There's stories about how the yeah. population exploded during that time. Well, Fruitland, um, yeah. Farmington. Right. I mean, we had, a narrow, we had a railroad. Yeah, we had Bloomfield. We had a narrow-gauge railroad that was sending... Sending food north to That's the right. miners, support the miners, and uh, for a for a different economy that was going on in Colorado then as well. Right. No, you're right. So there's been there has lots been, of transitions. Yeah, there and has the been. community has has thrived and survived, I would say. Yeah. During those times, so that's and that's great to uh, to remember from time to time, I would say. Um, recruitments. Um, how's that going? You know, once again, we have to have product. So right. we're working on that. Mm-hmm. We're working on having product to, to identifying all the pieces and parts that we've got privately held the, the, uh, of our different municipalities as well. Uh, everything that we have, because we want anyone sitting anywhere in the world to be able to get onto a database, which is on our site, and be able to search. And you can search by type, size, location, right. attributes, all of those type things. Um, so you got to... You got to get the inventory right. What what do you have? What are the what are the deficiencies in the market? And what can you do about that? But there's also something about sharing who you are and what opportunities that you that you represent as well. And we're doing those type things on, on, on having a marketing plan, and whether it's being you know funded internally or using grants for for something that's a little bit different. Uh-huh. Um, and we've got some active recruitments going on. I, I think we're probably having an announcement. For one, very, very soon. It's not huge, but it's a great start of, of showing the world what we have to offer and the opportunity this community has, nice. to, has to share. And we've got other things we're working on as well. And so, you, you first off, you take care of who you got. We're going mm-hmm. out every week sitting down with the existing businesses saying, how can we help you? You know, right. what, what keeps you up at night and what's an opportunity that, that's before you and how can we help you with those things. But we're also sharing to the world. We're also sharing within economic development and, the, uh, and within the, to the state and through site consultants and through companies and through our uh, APS, mm-hmm. um, um, which is um, Arizona Power. They see projects. We had a conversation just about a week ago, maybe a week and a half ago with them about, listen, you guys need to help us. You, if you see opportunities with projects, you should be sending them our way. You should be saying we've got partners in economic development in, in, in San Juan County, New Mexico, that may very well have something for you to take a look at. So, you know, sharing, uh, sharing the, uh, the, the opportunities, uh, being ready for the opportunities, and broadcasting to the world who we are and what we have to offer is a big part of recruitment. And we've been doing that from the, yelling it from the top, from the highest hill. True. Very true. And of course, but you are competing with other entities like yourself from those other communities too. But again, as you say, when you identify some of those things that we have that maybe gives us that competitive advantage, that's what you can use in those those shrieks that you make from the mountaintops. Well, there's at least 2,000 other organizations that do what we do. Yeah. So every single day, if we're not doing something that, that we're climbing the hill, we're, that we're taking steps, that we're finding new ways to share who we are, what we have to offer, and the opportunities we have, that's a day someone else probably is. Right. So we, we, we certainly are. I mean, our, uh, you know, our, our travel schedule, our outreach, our marketing, our broadcasting, our, our use of technology is all incredibly important. We can't be a flyover. You know, usually when we get in front of someone, like a site consultant that drives projects, they don't have any negative connotation about us. They just never thought of us. Mm-hmm. They never heard of us. Right. So we have to have a louder voice. Um, we have a, uh, just on Sunday, I'm leaving, I'm going to Chicago, and this is something that got started before I got here. So I'm I'm, okay. I'm picking this up. This isn't a Timism. This is something that was right. going on. Scott Bird and our office and the New Mexico Department of Economic Development, they came up with this and instituted it. Now I'm getting to go and getting to work it. But there's a uh, conference in Chicago that I think it's 2.7 million square feet, and it's called the International Manufacturing Technology uh, show. Okay. IMTS. And they do it every year. And it's, it is an international conference on economic development. 
Uh, I, I think there will be something like 70 countries represented there at the show. It's a week-long gig. And the New Mexico Department of Commerce is, or Economic Development, is taking Northwest Colorado, or Colorado, not Colorado, Northwest New Mexico, and having a booth there. Nice. So it's us and Gallup, primarily, okay. that's going to be there with the state, uh, highlighting who we are, what we have to offer, sites we have to offer, clusters we have. We got meetings with uh, with uh, uh, businesses. We're going to try to touch. There may be not be full fledged uh, meetings with two hundred different either exhibitors or companies while we're there. Okay. So we're going to be on the be on the move. But the state is actually highlighting one specific area, and this time it is Northwest um, New Mexico. Nice. Very good. Well, that that. Seems to make a lot of sense. I know, um, <clears throat> excuse me, it's been a long, I think, time goal to try to attract some type of manufacturer or multiple manufacturers yeah. to this area to try to build things here and export them out. Isn't it that is. part of the one of the one of the plans and goals of Forsyth oh, too? To... It certainly is. Sure. I mean, and it's first and foremost, we want to take care of what we have, but we want to make a bigger piece of buy as well. And that's how you do it: is either right. help companies expand or recruit new companies as well. Right, and this show is, is probably full of companies that make stuff. Yeah, and th that are looking in North America as well, mm -hmm. you know, uh, either from North America. And there and there's so many different storylines that goes on there. There be Canadian companies that realize that they need a stronger presence in the United States, that for the, their lifetime there was always open borders, but during COVID they were shut down. And if 70% of your business in the United States and the borders closed, then it's not a good operation to, to, for continuation. So there are so many different opportunities that we're, uh, uh, that we're going to take advantage of. And the international component is really even strong many times during election years. And the reason I say that is sure. a lot of times companies, even domestic companies, they're going to wait until they see which way things go after an election. So the last six months, or nine months before an election, maybe things slow down a little bit until they see what choice is going to be made by the populace and what direction and policy of, of things would go. Right. International is not as, not as affected as sometimes domestic during election years. Okay. So having a large international presence at a show like this, that's a good thing because they're not reading the papers every single day about this and that, just they're, they're sold on the opportunity what the United States has to offer. Got you. And I guess, isn't it true, though, too, it, depending on which way the election goes, maybe these companies want to have their ducks kind of in a, in a row, that if it goes the way they, they would like things to go, they can take action? You know. And, ha and already know that we, we have San Juan County, we have this, we have this. I don't know. We just have to, we have to be keenly aware of politics, but we never play them. Sure. You know, we have to dance whoever brings us the ball. We, right. we certainly have to be able to take advantage of any opportunity, but we have to be we have to understand which way the wind's blowing as well. Sure, but if I'm a manufacturer in a competitive market, I want to maybe look at these markets and say, okay, let's let's see what happens. But yeah. let's let's look at San Juan County, and as soon as we're ready, let's pounce and, on and that many, opportunity. Many many times, it's just it's the relationship building as well. Sometimes these, it may take eighteen months mm -hmm. for them to get through their process from when they identified the true. need to right. expand to before they're going to pull the trigger on yeah. that. So I guess that's true. If someone meets you next Monday, they're probably not going to open yeah. up a factory Tuesday. No, it's just not a so quick. Of, it's a matter of being invited to compete yeah. and being within the framework that they know of you and you know of them. Exactly. Well, good luck. Enjoy. Yeah, I hope so. it's, and it's, uh that's a great something like a great opportunity to uh, to tout and have the state behind you a little yeah. bit too, right? Yeah, and when you get out of there, you know, we roll, usually roll out of there about six o'clock at night, you're tired. Because you've been duck to da da, you've been oh, on sure. all day long. Yeah, right, you've been selling, 20, selling, selling, and yeah. talking, and and meeting, and making those relationships. You're right. So, yeah. but uh, but that's good. I'm glad that you're representing San Juan County at no. this uh, opportunity and working with uh, Gallup as well. You said they're going to yeah. be there too. Yeah, yeah, and, and which is good because uh, I think collectively one and one equals three. We yeah. can talk about the attributes of, of the region of the state. We can talk about the attributes of our community. Uh, we can divide and conquer. We can, we can back each other up and uh, and sharpen e e each other's arguments. And uh, So there will be things we do together, then we also will divide and conquer as well. Right. There. I guess that regionalism is another part of what you're talking about and, and working with both um, McKinley County and maybe La Plata County in Colorado. Yeah, certainly. And if, if, and that's, that's, that's a great example. Um, uh, if you think about our connection to Durango and La Plata, uh, we need each other. Uh, we make each other stronger. You know, certainly if we're talking to folks about about Farmington, about San Juan County, and about other municipalities, 
we we're going to work in the fact that we're not far from Durango. We're going to we're going to talk about those things, those attributes they have as well, and I think they should do the same with us. Um, you know, if they probably can't uh, entice a manufacturer to come there just because of the cost of living there and the cost of housing. Right. So, but if they want to, to strengthen their economy, they need to strengthen the regional economy as well. So it, it just, it makes perfect sense for us to, to work together to build the region and to understand that each one of us has fortes and that they align very, very nicely uh, if we allow them to. Sure. Sure. Very true. Very true. My guest this morning, Tim Gibbs, is here. He is, of course, the executive director of Four Set Four Corners Economic Development. We just have a couple of minutes remaining this morning, Mr. Gibbs, and I wanted to ask you a little bit about this um, partnerships with maybe the cities for, um, I don't know what RFI means, but you'll tell me, I'm sure, when we talk about RFI yeah. sharing and pro yeah. sharing. Well, RFI is a request for information. There you go. Thank and, you. And, and PROs is, is projects. Okay. Many, many times we uh, will get uh, the leads yeah. from the state. On, uh, on opportunity for economic development. We have an inquiry from so-and-so. Yeah, we do, okay. we do. And for me, I wanna be completely transparent with our municipal partners of the kind of stuff we're seeing. Mm -hmm. uh, now, it's, it's not that I'm sending those type things to the cities in, in hope that they're going to apply. I hope they do it with us. I hope we can do it collectively, mm -hmm. whether it's best from them or us or our partnership. But I want them to see the opportunities, and I want to be very, very clear and transparent with them about the type of opportunities. Because I think if we do those type of things, and they can see the trends in the economy, they can see the trends of what people are asking for, they can see the trends in what segments of the economy are coming to the state saying, hey, we're looking at New Mexico, I think that'll give them better information for a better pub public policy. Got gotcha. you. Okay. And, I, and hopefully it makes us a better partner to them as well. Right. So we just want to find a, a way to share without breaking confidentiality of companies. Because many mm -hmm. times we don't even know the company name anyway. It's a project name. It could be Project Banana. It, yeah. I mean, it can be anything. Sure. Right. Um, but we can. But what what is identified is the attributes they're looking for. Sure. Are they looking for a building? Are they looking for land? How much infrastructure? What kind of workforce needs? Uh, what segment of the economy would they fall under? What kind of transportation do they need? I mean, if you think about this, if they're saying that they need rail, that's a great attribute for everyone to know, and certainly San Juan County that's in the process of trying to bring rail to, right. to here. So we need to know what kind of opportunities, how often they happen, what size these, and how we can quantify what they're looking for because it'll give us the information, all of us, better information to represent the people that elected them. Very so, true. I, so I think it's a really powerful thing for us. We just need to do it in a way that doesn't break confidentiality, uh, that doesn't hurt our chances trying to uh, to attract, but builds upon them. Sure. And again, the cities and the county are big supporters of Forsed financially and, and otherwise. They they help you do what you do. Well, I think they're big supporters of the economy. Yes, first and true. foremost. Um, you know, we get about But they half put their money where their mouths are. They do, and about half our funding comes from the private sector, and mm -hmm. about half comes from our public sec uh, uh, sector as well. Uh, we just want to give them the tools for they can be successful as well for all of us doing it jointly and collectively. Sure. Because uh, if we all unite and we're all working together and we're all using the strengths of, of each organization and of our municipalities, we can we can swing above our, uh, our average. Right. Which is for a baseball reference. I like that. So there, there you go. Very yeah. good. Um, internships. You've got some internships to offer uh, potential well, San Juan, students. Right? San Juan County does, and we're working with uh, not San Juan. San Juan County, College. So, yeah, San Juan College. Okay. We're working with them yes. about trying to uh, do some uh, very unique things, and more than anything, we want to give unique experiences to students mm -hmm. that's going to help in their education and their vocational career. Gotcha. We want them to have experience when they leave out of there that says not only. I can, but I have. Nice. And I want to encourage the folks that are listening to us today that if you have businesses to really maybe think about it in that way. Not only could what could you get out of having an intern from the college, but what could you give back to that intern that's going to make them better for when they turn pro? Right. And if we think about it in that way, they're getting ready to turn pro. How can you invest in them? How can you be their triple A? Uh, keep another baseball. I like it, right? Uh, so I, I really nice. like for the folks to think about that. 
And if you can't, you can easily chase it down through the college or you can come through us and we'll help you as well. Very true. And I know that the college has some grant monies that they allows them to pay yeah. these students to, to go to work and maybe, you know, fill the tank with gas to get back and forth or whatever. So it's mm -hmm. not on the employer. The college is, is paying that, uh, that part of it. And so a student may get, may get an actual salary or some hourly wage to have this internship with these companies. And you and may, you, yeah, you may even be able to specify that, hey, I want to, someone to take a look at my marketing. I want someone to look at in different attributes of mm -hmm, your business. Mm -hmm. It's not just answering the phone. Right. You know, there's there's a lot of skill sets represented by this college of folks that's, that's looking to gain experience with degrees uh, that could help our businesses and help move them forward as well. Very true, very true. Mr. Gibbs, we're out of time, sorry to say, but thank you for coming in. Safe travels to Chicago. We'll look yeah. forward to hearing about that on maybe your next visit in October. Yeah, I look forward to it, and I enjoy the opportunity to share uh, with our with our population what's going on and what we're thinking about how to make a brighter future. Yeah, very exciting to uh, to hear what uh, what you're working on. So thanks for sharing with us. Appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Tim Gibbs from Forset, my guest here on KSJE.